Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous episode I finally finished insulating my workshop and installing windows and doors. In this episode I will show how I installed drywall and painted the walls. A short disclaimer, there are some dark purple spots visible in my videos. I noticed that only when editing these videos so my apologies for this annoying glitch. Once again I use this 30 year old limousine to bring some drywall sheets. I bought 24 pieces of 120 by 260 cm size sheets. As this job was done prior to installing the garage door, I could not drive into it and simply unload the sheets. I had to bring them in one by one and in a hurry as the rain clouds were chasing me. I put some styrofoam on the concrete slab to make the landing a bit softer and avoid cracking the sheets. In despite of that, I still cracked a couple of them. A gust of the wind made me lose coordination when I was walking through the door and I hit the door sill with those sheets. But I was still able to use them, so no big deal. After the material was safely stacked inside the garage, I tried to hang the first sheet. I was using 37mm drywall screws. Prior to screwing the sheets to the studs, I had to trim the top of each sheet by 8cm. I also had to drill the holes for wires where wall outlets will be installed later. I used some wood shims on top of foundation to avoid drywall contacting it and absorbing moisture from the concrete. Also this allowed me to adjust the sheet left or right if needed. Once a sheet is attached to the studs with two or more screws, it's enough to hold it in place. At first I was using this drill bit with a limiter to prevent driving a screw too deep. But later I was working with a simple Phillips or PH bit because the limiter bit does not allow you to see the screw head and in some cases this gets annoying. Many builders use special gun for driving screws really fast, but for me this was not the trickiest part. I had lots of measuring, drilling and cutting to do, so driving screws with this impact driver was quite satisfying. Also some people say it's better to use a drill, not an impact driver, but for me it worked better. When a screw is almost flush with the drywall surface, you can feel how many clicks from the impact driver you need to put the screw to its final depth. But I guess this is just a personal preference. On this first day of installing the drywall, I managed to hang 4 sheets. It was a time consuming job at first, I was not too confident. But later I gained some momentum. In this shot you can see what I call a perfect depth for a drywall screw. It cannot go too deep or it will tear the paper and lose its holding strength. And it cannot be protruding because later on it will be a problem when taping the joints and applying the mud. It was the end of June and it was one of the hottest days this summer, as it shows in this shot. But I was moving forward every day. A bit trickier spot of this drywall installation was around the windows. For one window I cut the sheets prior to hanging them, for another window I cut them when they were in place. Both methods worked out well for me after measuring and cutting multiple times. One area I was not sure how to deal with was this place for electrical panel, so I simply continued working on the longest wall until I simply had no other choice as to concentrate and complete the task. With this longest wall I had one issue, the spaces between the centers of the studs had to be 60 cm. But in some stage of the framing we probably missed something or took our measurements from the edges rather than centers, not sure. But this caused some spaces not to be equal and I had to leave some 2-4 to four mm gaps between the sheets. Before cutting drywall to fit around the beams and windows, I was using this multi-tool. It worked pretty well. The longest wall was finally installed. As I mentioned, there were some gaps, but that's not a big deal. What actually was a big deal was this corner which broke while I was driving the last screw. I ripped out the broken piece completely and later had to cover it with mud multiple times. It turned out ok at the end, but some unplanned maintenance was needed. Then I proceeded with this front wall. 
I had to hang boards horizontally here because the gap on the left was more than 60 cm wide and a vertical sheet would be too narrow to cover this area. To join two sheets at their edges I had to use some wooden blocks in places where there was no stud where two boards would meet. For this wall I used some smaller pieces of the drywall left out after cutting the holes for windows. So at the end I really had a minimal amount of material to throw out. This corner had a big gap. Maybe the studs meeting at the corner were not perfectly straight, I don't know. But mud and tape will solve the issues like this. Next I moved on to mudding the screw holes. I used this mud for the screw holes and for the seams before taping them. Where the gaps between the sheets were wider, I applied mud there and waited for it to dry before taping the seams. It was probably not necessary, but I felt more comfortable with this workflow. And of course I saw multiple YouTube videos explaining that this was a good practice, so I used this method. To mud the joints where two sheets meet, I used this narrow blade. I was really not confident in spreading mud widely and then sanding too much of it. So I worked slowly and carefully. Then I attached the paper tape and cut it to length. When applying mud on the tape, once again I did that very carefully. Just wanted to make sure the tape is getting wet and bonding with the mud. Because I was doing everything way too slowly and carefully, I needed to apply more mud in the next steps. But that was not a big deal. One note, I was not planning to cover all the surface with mud, just the screw holes and seams. I have never done this work before, so it was quite challenging, especially working on the corners. After all the taping work was completed, I proceeded with mudding one more coat on all the seams. Again, I was very careful so the coverage was minimal to avoid any bumps and many hours of sanding. The next day, when this coat of mud was dry, I decided to give it a light sanding and one more coat of mud. After this last coat, I sanded everything one more time. And after that, I wiped everything with a wet sponge to minimize the amount of dust. Some pros say that it's not necessary, others argue that paint will bond all the dust, I don't know for sure but I know that cleaning didn't hurt either. Then I cleaned most of the dust with a shop vac and proceeded with painting. First I took a brush and painted all the areas which cannot be reached with a roller, around the wires, in the corners, around the doors and beams. Applying the paint with this roller was quite difficult at first. The paint was too thick. As this paint is water-based, I put some water in it and the work moved much faster. After painting the first coat, I applied the second coat the next day and the job was done. I will share some better quality shots when I will be editing the final video of this build. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. It will encourage me to make some higher quality content in the future. Until the next time, cheers!